So uh, this year we added a new award um, for special achievement. Um, I guess, you know, using an analogy for, from music or uh, Hollywood's uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, we felt it was worth recognizing some of the people who have helped to, uh, to build the RFID industry, to create the technologies and, and the standards that, develop, uh, that, that, that enable uh, these solutions uh, to deliver business value. So our three finalists are Sanjay Sarma, who is the co-founder of the Auto ID Center at MIT, for developing the concept of the electronic product code, his leadership of the research team that de developed the early EPC systems, and his leadership of the Auto ID Labs, which is ongoing. Uh, to Bill Hardgrave, for director of, uh, who is the director of the University of Arkansas's RFID Research Center, for his research into the, uh, the effects of RFID systems on inventory accuracy, replenishment, and business operations. And to Robert Bacon, Michael Slocum, and Dan Radford at the U.S. Navy AIT office for their pioneering work in helping to transform the U.S. Department of Defense supply chain by using RFID and other auto ID technologies. The winner of the Special Achievement Award Sanjay Sarma, co founder of the Auto ID Center at MIT. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. Um, I'll talk about Mark in a minute, but it's a really great honor. I brought this out, you know, this is going to hang in my office. <laughs> things like this are more precious to me than, uh, than a lot of other things. But this award is very precious. I have to tell you, I spoke to my daughter this morning and in, in, uh, in Boston. I said, uh, I might receive an award today. And apparently she told everyone in school I was receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but uh, this is an extraordinary award. And in some ways, it is a Nobel Peace Prize. I, I have to say that I, I don't feel I'm receiving this award as an individual, but rather as a cheerleader for a movement of which uh, everyone here has played uh, a key part in. And uh, there are a lot of people to thank. Um, I won't do that, but I do need to thank certainly my co-founders of the Auto ID Center, the four amigos, we used to call ourselves, um, uh, David Brock, who's a colleague of mine at MIT, uh, Kevin Ashton, who's uh, after the Auto ID Center was at Thing Magic, and now he's at Belkin in California, and uh, he's doing well. And uh, Sunny Su, also a professor at MIT, who's now at, uh, he runs a company in Shanghai and doing very well. Um, and then, you know, the Auto ID Center evolved. We went through, uh, we became the Auto ID Labs and we had centers all over the world. And about 200 professors, researchers, visiting scientists, grad students, undergrads have all been through the system. And they're out there, uh, hopefully creating noise and uh, creating controversy, but hopefully changing things. Uh, we owe every one of them. In particular, one of them, uh, if I had to dedicate this award, I'd dedicate it to one person, uh, Christian Florkemeyer, who works with us, uh, who's a postdoc, a research scientist at MIT. He had a, he got star, he uh, caught an avalanche in Switzerland and was very severely injured, and he's in Switzerland right now recuperating. Uh, I'll be visiting him next week, and we all think of him. I know many of you know the names. Um, and a community, which is 2,000 people, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm the cheerleader, but the 2,000 people, um, who have worked uh, on auto ID in various standards, bodies, and participating, you know, fighting, arguing, competing. But what an extraordinary achievement that is, 2,000 people, and now an entire world. One of the reasons that I'm holding this up particularly is, you know, it started in America, then it went to Europe, but now this is a worldwide phenomenon. The two winners today of the previous award, this award, uh, were from Colombia, right? And... Uh, it's an international thing. I hear about it all over the world. Um, I just want to do two more things. I want to talk, I want to just read out some names, echoes from the past and present, people who've been involved in RFID who kind of changed and shaped it. Chris Diorio, Steve Smith, you know these names. Ken Traub, Prasad Puta, who founded OAT and now is at Checkpoint Systems. Roger Stewart, I don't know if you have people even remember Roger Stewart, he used to be at Alien Technology. Kurt Carinder at Alien. Jamshed Dubash, I know he's around somewhere. Bernie Hogan, Art Smith, I see him here. Chris Adcock, I see him here. You know, these are all the names that kind of, you know, it's a random sampling. 
Steve Railing, Mike O'Shea, Charles Kobayashi, I saw him here. It's like attending a wedding and meeting all these relatives that you haven't seen for years, but you feel the same kind of kinship. Peter Cole, I saw Dan Engels somewhere. I think Dan Engels is around. And of course, Chris, who should have been here, but is right now recuperating in Switzerland. The final thing before I step out, I just wanted to say was, EPC Global has done a great job of bringing everyone together formally. But what really also binds this community is the extraordinary commitment, kinship, and kind of intellectual uh, engagement of the community itself. And one uh, agency that has created that kinship is uh, this event. It's uh, RFID Journal Live. I, uh, I don't know how much, in fact, I know. Uh, I, you know, Mark Roberti has wearing, been wearing the same jacket for the last eight years. <laughs> so I, I'm not convinced he's making any money out of this. I think he can just keep things going. But his commitment and his uh, real, you know, maniacal energy in keeping this community together is extraordinary. And I think we owe him a big hand of applause. And if I may also say, there's a website, there's the events, the printed magazine, you know? I mean, we all have our company brochures, our brochures, but the brochure that speaks for the industry really is either the EPC Global brochures or the RFID Journal magazine. And we need to keep that going because that's a thing that keeps this, you know, that's our calling card in many ways. It's our, you know, our real-time calling card. People go to the website if they're interested, but the magazine is what you shove in people's faces, right? If you want to get them interested in RFID. So I'd like to also give a round of applause, not only to the community, but also to, to, to RFID Journal and to Mark Roberti. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget this.